The Upshot Project welcomes you to the Cheeky Travelers podcast, a show for people who love and aspire to travel. In each episode, you'll get a greater insight into what traveling can do for you as it has for us. From our anecdotes, we aim to inspire you to go out and explore the world around you with an open mind. If you would like to see if our voices match our faces, you're more than welcome to pop over to our YouTube channel, The Upshot Project. But we also have other social media in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok if you would like to reach out to us. And now, it's time to get lost. Welcome to another episode of the Cheeky Travelers podcast, brought to you by your wonderful hosts, Hayden and Solen from the Upshot Project. Hell yes. Hell yes. That's us. <laughs> I feel that we're getting better and better at this. Oh yeah, for sure. This is only like our third crack. It should be fine. <laughs> should be fine. Easy sounding the whole way through. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about holidays and milestones from memory. If my notes in my head are correct. Yeah. And uh, um, and while traveling, how that affects like us generally. So, Sol, before we get into this, though, Sol's got a cheeky question for me. Yes. And I'm curious. <laughs> well, cheeky or silly question. I didn't think much about it, okay? okay? So, my question is for you, Hayden. Yes. <clears throat> would you rather be... Oh, it's truth. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather be a white cow with... The black spots. Oh, good grief. Is or a black cow with white spots. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that we're currently sitting on a uh, cow skin. But, like, for the, for, the, for the people that can't see what we're doing, we're currently sitting in uh, a chair in a nice little holiday loft. And beneath our seats is a what we believe to be a real cow skin, which is... That's great. I guess, yeah, it's not great. It's not, it's really, not our choice. Not really. Yeah. But... Uh, it is black and white, and hence the question. Honestly, I don't know what I would feel like to be the difference, so I'm going to go with being like a... Because I love Dalmatians, different species. Mm. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, white with black spots. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. why not the opposite? Uh, because I'd feel more like a polar bear then. Because they're black... A polar bear? Yeah, because they're oh. black skins, but they've got... Uh... True. Yeah, and because I, I feel like I'm more playful, I feel like dogs are kind of where I was going with that one. Yeah, you're kind of a... Uh, how do they call it? They, um, you know the type of boyfriend, uh, not the uh, golden retriever boyfriend. Oh, oh my yes. gosh. <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly the kind of compliment so I was looking it for. It makes sense. Oh, yeah, that's true. Polar bear have black skin. And why is that? What's the function of it? Uh, that's a good question. I think part of it is because... It protect like it protects the the skin from the cold in some way. I honestly, I like I honestly, I'm not entirely sure because I know that they've got a, a layer of a, a wonderful layer of insulation through fur and blubber, but I'm not really sure. We're gonna try and Wikipedia it later. Hundred percent. Maybe no, what I'm you said was just bullshit. Yeah, I do, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Probably. Okay, well, I hope we're gonna get better and better with these cheeky questions because that was a poor attempt. Yeah, well, you know. I think it's better than. Uh, your but, question last week, but I, whatever. I don't remember what that question was anymore. Like, was... why am I wearing, like, holes in my jeans? That was bad. Well, I mean, like, it, it's on a fairly similar topic. It's like, well, we're in the room and there's chongin. <laughs> we're in the room and there's a cow on the floor. Like... <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay, let's uh, dive right in. So, I guess I wanted to talk about holidays and being away yeah because i know that for you like christmas for example is a really important holiday with like for you and for your family i i think yeah. you you have a better understanding of what that tradition means to you like more than me okay yeah because in in your household you the like the main holiday correct me if I'm wrong, is mostly like New Year's. That's yeah. kind of more what you're going for. But yeah, like with Christmas, it's a big deal in my, you, yeah. in my household. Like we, we, like all my extended family, we try and make a point of catching up on either Christmas or Boxing Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and that's just been the case and because my parents have been very family focused yeah just having like obviously there's the element of santa but in australia there's not a lot of snow so mm -hmm. the whole song of um begin it's beginning to feel a lot like christmas makes no sense because for us we don't have like any snow falling yeah but yeah it's it's definitely a, a family time and initially, my family also wanted to make New Year's a family time, but that now has changed to being with mates. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, I think whether it's like a culture within my family or just my immediate friend group, it definitely feels like Australia, at least in Sydney, is very much like that. But no, like here too. Yeah. In, in but... Canada and Quebec as well. It's just my family because I don't have a big family. Like the family members I have are basically. All over. Yeah, you're spread across the world. Yeah. Very literally. Yeah. So, yeah, we have never when I when I was a child, yes, with my my cousins that live in Quebec. Yeah, we were having Christmas with everyone, but we all became adults, and you know, with me going away for mm. Australia, to Australia. Sorry, like, yeah, I think but... I lost it a bit. I'm curious though, like it, it also sort of extends not only to Christmas, but like other things like birthdays and... What do you mean? Like, do you guys celebrate birthdays that much or... Like in my family? Yeah, in your family. Uh, not as much as your family. Yeah. For sure. Or as other family. What about like Easter and... Oh yeah, I've always had uh, my little uh, Chucky little hidden. Chucky. Little hidden Chucky. Oh, okay. My yeah, little yeah. hidden Chucky hidden. Even like at thirty years old, I still want my uh, hidden chocolate. Okay. I really love it. Mental note: whether or not I've done it prior. Mental note again. You haven't, but it's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, because you remember last time you were in Canada and it was Easter, I actually hid the chocolates all over the property. property. Yeah, all over the house. And, and you thought that was weird, really weird. Ah, uh, well, no. Not really, because we do a chalky hunt too. Yeah. I think it was more the fact that it was outside. Because in Australia, like, it's still kind of hot. And any chocolates you've put outside are Fair probably going to be either taken yeah. by a bird or Fair. Mm. or something. Whereas, yeah. Or it's going to melt. Yeah. But anyway, um, your first Christmas away from home was actually with me. Or away from your family. Was it? Yes. I think so. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case because I was. Uh -huh. I was twenty. What was it? Twenty eighteen. <sighs> twenty. Yeah, because we started yeah. dating in twenty nineteen. Eighteen, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Yeah, twenty eighteen. We spent it together. Yeah, that was my first Christmas away, and that felt weird. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Really strange. Yeah. Like obviously, it was amazing to hang out with someone as wonderful as yourself. <laughs> on that day mm -hmm. um also gizlane who airbnb absolutely legend mm -hmm. yeah we were in new key cornwall was like, it cornwall, cornwall or is, new is the region isn't it new and new key was the town okay. okay yeah cornwall same thing <laughs> same same but different <laughs> more specific but yeah i think that christmas felt really strange but it felt like almost growing pains i guess like in the sense that like not maybe not every year i'd be able to spend christmas with my family mm. and because like you said it's a big uh a big part of my i guess upbringing mm -hmm. every year christmas was a big deal so with that i was like i have to look in at other things that i'm grateful for outside of just having family immediately with me but the fact that i've got family elsewhere that still love me and send me love like wherever i am yeah and I found that to be a very unique experience because, um, uh, yeah, our Airbnb hostess, we were, she was absolutely wonderful. She sort of had a very, very wonderful motherly vibe and it felt nice in that sense to be overseas and still feel very comfortable where I was. Yeah. I didn't feel that isolated, mm. um, but I, I felt I felt doing it with you was was wonderful. And we've now, we've now made it to five years in a row. Five well, Christmases that's... in a row. Very, very nice. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like for for you like having your was that the first christmas you'd had away from your family back in 2018 yeah yeah it was and for you it was like no like it wasn't weird because like um is it every year that my mom works for christmas or something like that so 
you know, it was never like a big, big deal mm. because if she was working when, well, we were not doing anything special anyway. Yeah. So for me, that was special actually to spend Christmas overseas. Like okay. that, that was really cool. Like I really, really enjoyed it. And to see how other people are celebrating as well, it's really nice. And I think that's an upside to traveling um, when there's holidays. Yeah. You know, because you get to see what the world is doing on those dates. Yeah. What are the traditions? Um, what is the food that they're eating and all that stuff? So it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. No, that's actually, yeah, that's a very fair point. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we're currently in Matan in Quebec. Yeah. And it's very, very quiet. But just in the last few days, we've we've had some uh, misadventures, mm -hmm. but we've also come across some people that have been absolute legends, just in, like, little ways. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the mechanic when we first got off the, yeah. off the, the boat, mm -hmm. uh, you had a problem with your car and... They looked at it for like what half an hour 40 minutes yeah and they just i was about to pay and they just it was like they were like oh merry christmas that's free i was like oh shit, thank you yeah that was cool. and yeah and like this morning as well because the day that we're recording right now is actually on christmas christmas day enough, yeah christmas day and uh we went for a walk and went to get a coffee and the lady at the counter actually gave us two muffins and i was like it's really cool and yeah. you know how yesterday you were like i i told you about how i'm not in a gratitude state mm -hmm. often well i guess this morning when this happened i was like oh it's really nice yes like we're really lucky no it's not is it lucky i don't know if it's luck but it's just gratitude yeah like you when know? you when you i guess when you look at something like oh that's really nice mm. you're grateful for it because you appreciate it yeah I guess it's just a different way of looking at it, perhaps. Definitely. So, and same for the mechanics. Two, three days ago, it was like, yeah, it was really, really cool. Like people, I think, I don't know, but I feel like people over Christmas holidays might be a bit nicer. <laughs> Generally, yeah. M not nicer, more generous. More generous. More generous would be the term, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely... I definitely find that in depending on the area that you're in, that's the case. Because where we were in Cornwall, we could have easily been kicked out of that Airbnb, but yeah. she allowed us in. Here, we've already had like a couple of nice experiences, but I do find that I I need to at least take some time to not mourn mm -hmm. not being there, but mm -hmm. just be grateful that I've got that family and they still. Like they miss me and I miss them, but yeah. it's like, it's not like I'm being resented or, or, or I'm uh, regretting where I am, uh, if it's elsewhere. Yeah. Because I sort of think of it like, at the end of the day, like, it, like I'm going to go see my family another time anyway. It doesn't have to be yeah. Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. I think obviously with this time of the year, it's like, you definitely, particularly with the days getting really, really, really short, mm -hmm. like I definitely hold on to... Uh, the warmth of summer and also the the warmth that I, I get from my family through yeah. support. So it's nice, but I think I sort of appreciate it in a different way when I'm away. Um, and it, it, I did find it very interesting finding like the first little while, say like year or two when it came to Christmas and birthdays, like it wasn't such, like you didn't have the same energy towards it. No. Like, oh, it's just Christmas. And I'm like, yeah, it's Christmas. Yeah. And, like, I like I definitely felt like that whole, like, what is a golden, what did you say? Golden retriever energy around yeah. it. Wait. So, like, like, oh, I'm, like, super excited. But, yeah. With no, you, because, it's... like, it's going to sound super depressive, but I... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Merry Christmas. No, but, like, yeah, and that's the thing. That's You're just proving my point. Like, it's not because it's Christmas that now we have to get like overexcited and do things that we don't do normally. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why like with my family, every time we like wanted to treat ourselves, we didn't have to necessarily wait in brackets on a holiday. Yeah. You know, we would do it if we wanted to eat a really good meal 
or by each other's presence, we would do it before then. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and yes, if I want to be depressive on Christmas, I'm going to be depressive on Christmas, <laughs> you know, because that's how I feel. And yeah. why, why would I repress those emotions? Because it's supposed to be a happy holiday. Mm. I think, I don't know. And that's what I've been, it's funny because especially this year, um, with my clients at work, I've been hearing a lot of stuff that about how they don't like Christmas as yeah. well, just because they find it very hypocrite. They're like, I'm not seeing my family all year long. And not that I don't want to see them, but now I'm feeling forced to see them. And we're just going to talk about random, random stuff. And then everyone goes back into their car and just gossip. And then, have you seen auntie how drunk she was or blah 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 like look what she was wearing yeah did you see her hair you know right. yeah not a lot of like and the, and that makes like sen to me that makes sense on paper but i am i guess i guess you'd say either privileged and or entitled in regards to not necessarily You're having so entitled my, yeah well it's very possible freaking um but I, I mean, like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing out the bus, a little bit more. One, one, one more time. What, what else you got before me? <laughs> Heterosexual right. gender. Ah, perfect. Oh Thank you. God. Thank you so much. I needed that. Very humbly. Uh... <laughs> Just a reminder. You're really privileged. You're yeah. like up there on the pyramid. <laughs> yep. no, I, I, like, I see that. I see that. But. I I can definitely see that it's also it can be very much while there's so much happiness so um, and I guess meaning on one single mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. that that puts obviously a lot of pressure to be happy on that day yeah and if you're not well then you're almost it's like the it's like you've gone too far the wrong way mm -hmm. and um, yeah I definitely I, I can empathize but I don't fully it's, understand yeah it's like Valentine's Day. Oh my god. Oh man, I hate What that. a stupid, what a stupid holiday. I... It's not even a holiday, but like, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, celebrations. Yeah. Like, it's so stupid. I, I... And since we're together, it's been almost five years, we haven't necessarily celebrated uh, Valentine's Day. No, we just do nice things that we should do as a couple as often as humanly possible. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's the thing that I never quite understood was, like, you have to, like, show love on one day in a year. I'm like, oh, what about the other 364? Okay, but then why? Because it's the same thing with Christmas, then. Mm. And that's fair. <laughs> and that's fair. I'm cornering you. Ah. Do you feel cornered? Not really. <laughs> I, like, I still, like, I still back. Like, I, I yeah. like Christmas. Um, but, I'm, I, but being up in the Northern Hemisphere, it makes more sense to have Christmas. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. for us it's in the middle of summer i literally was like on the phone to my parents uh last night yeah. well their christmas day and they were down at the beach yeah it's like 30 odd degrees yeah it's it's great time so great so like uh. it doesn't necessarily make sense to like have christmas in australia on the basis that the whole point i see for christmas is to mm. have something to look forward to in the middle of one of the most depressing times of the year uh. I see. Yeah. So, uh, so here we just had the winter solstice for four days ago. Yeah. And the days are super, super short. But if you've got something to look forward to in yeah. the darkness, as it were, yeah, it sort of it gives you something more. The light. Yeah, like it gives you some fun, <laughs> something fun to look yeah. forward to. Uh, uh -huh. Um. Whereas in Australia, you just wake up, you're like, oh yeah, I'm in Australia. Like you know, it's hot, it's sunny. It was great. Yeah. Honestly, it was great. Yeah. I loved it. Except for the first time you came to Australia and it was on fire. Yeah, but still, like, I mean, the fact that it's summer or on Christmas Day is just amazing. I loved it. Yeah, you only need to wear shorts, t-shirt. Yeah. Thongs if you want to. No, but just like the beach, like, because for me, the beach means holiday. Yeah. You're on break, on a break, like, it was super great. Yeah. Super great. But like, what about... Um, other, I mean, yeah, you, you mentioned like birthdays Yeah. for you. Yeah. Birthdays can are be quite important. They were more so as a kid. Nowadays it's like, like happy, but like, it's just an, another 
a nice day. Like, mm-hmm. most of the time I forget my own birthday. Mm-hmm. I remember my dad's, which is a week after mine. Yeah. And that's the one I usually focus on. Mm. And then you are, you're, you're the one asking me questions like, what do you want for your birthday? What do you want for your birthday? And I'm like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> so, I, yeah, mm. I, I, I find birthdays are, are a nice celebration of, say, every five, ten years. But like... Okay, why? Just because it feels more significant. A reminder that you're getting, like, older. Oh, yeah. Way older. Way Back older. In ten years since we ce- we celebrated you. How do you feel? Well, I mean, like, we're both almost 30. You've only got a few more months to go. Mm. Mm. How do you feel about your 30th? <laughs> no, but I'm talking about, like... So, so you celebrate when you're 30 years old, and then next time you celebrate it is, like, when you're 40. Right, oh, no, like, but like, like we celebrate it every year, but it's not, yeah. it's not such a big mm. thing. And when you're away for those birthdays in your family, because you have two sisters, um, so like your family is bigger than mine. I'm an only child, yes, so like, and it it's like my parents and myself. Mm. You know what I mean? So like, when you're away for those birthdays, how do you feel? I uh, I guess I don't. I don't feel too bad. I mean, the first birthday I spent, or one of one of the first birthdays that I spent, it was really quite, like, I was actually quite depressed mm. and stuff. But, I, like, at the time, I was sort of trying to figure out where I was traveling, what I was doing. Yeah. And I was kind of, I was sleeping on a mate's floor. Like, I just, I, it, it, <laughs> it's really sad. It, like, it was. It was, like, and I went to, uh, I remember that we went to the Natural History Museum in in london i went to a comedy gig and i ended up accidentally heckling the mc okay which which actually lit up my day a bit more it was quite mm-hmm. funny mm-hmm. but yeah it was just a an odd time i didn't like do you when you miss holidays like that or uh, not holidays when you miss um celebrations like that because you're away do you feel do, do you feel selfish does a part of you feel selfish for not being with your family? That's a great question. Mm. And I would have to say that part of me does say yes, mm-hmm. because I'm doing things that I want to do, hence why I'm here, Yeah, sort of thing. But I think because I've got a, a good understanding uh, or a good open communication with my family, it's a little easier to to sort of get a sense as to how they're going, what they're doing, and still impart my love and support for them mm-hmm. as they give to me on my birthday or their birthdays. Mm-hmm. So I, I think we've learned over the last few years how to deal with Hayden not being there. Yeah. Uh, so it's not it's not been too bad. It's not been too bad on that front, but definitely for something like, uh, say, weddings mm. of family members, because I missed one of my cousin's weddings yeah. very recently. And that was really hard because I felt like I had like a bit of pressure from a lot of different family members to be there. Yeah. And it was sort of like not being shunned, Mm -hmm. but like you're clearly choosing something over us. And it just, it's like, I don't know. Like, like, um, I I don't have as much financial freedom as I would love. Because if I, you know, yeah. if I just won the lottery, uh, yeah. I'd just pop back for, you know, a few days. It's it. such a good point because I think money is a big part of it as well. Because, of course, we wouldn't miss any milestone nope. if we had enough money. Because that would just be so easy to just, hey, you got a wedding, like, in one month? No worries. I'm going to spend, like, 10 grand on this flight and I'm going to be there. Yeah. You know? I'll but, be there and I can be there for a week and mm, we can go out, for, have an expensive dinner mm, or whatever. Like, I know what you mean. It's tricky. Yeah. But at, like, have you, have there been many times where you have also felt like it's been really tricky to be away for say weddings and things like that? Like or... the thing is around me, around me, there's not a lot of people mm-hmm. that had a wedding because it's not necessarily a big part of our culture in Quebec, um, not as much as not as much as in Australia, for example. Like we don't get married. I think in Quebec the percentage of people that don't get married is closer to fifty percent. Wow. So like we choose de facto relationship it's... over like you know yeah. marriage, 
which is which is really impressive for me when i arrived in australia i was like why is everyone wants to get married why is there such such a big pressure to mm. get married like it's so much money and we always go back to the money side of things but yeah. like yeah like I, i i'd rather spend money into traveling than having a a wedding yeah you know what i mean anyway that being said <laughs> Um, I've missed one wedding in my life and it was my cousin wedding in France, uh, Roxanne. Roxy, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah like, um, she got, she got wedded, um, can't remember, I was, I think we were in Australia. Yeah, I think we were in Australia, it might have been like two years ago or something. Mm -hmm. And like, money-wise, I couldn't because flying from Australia to France was really expensive and I had work and you know it was really really expensive for, so I couldn't and I felt so bad yeah well I mean there was COVID on top of that as well about two two three years ago COVID was saying yeah but not at that time uh, oh so it was just yeah whatever yeah, yeah. but like yeah it was It was hard because I really wanted to be with my family. I haven't seen them in a while because of COVID. So it would have been great. But yeah, couldn't. Um, but like, so this summer, for example, I've been invited to another cousin's wedding in France and I can do it. Yes. You know, so I will make it. Yeah. Which I'm really happy. And same for my best friends last year. I was in Australia. Um, they invited me for the their wedding as a bridesmaid and I was able to make it. Yeah, I you know, like yeah. time wise and money wise and stuff, it made more sense yeah. to go. Um but yeah, it's it always sucks. But talking about because for me wedding and stuff are like milestone yeah. that we're missing while we're away. Um We are 30 years old, our friends are buying houses, our friends are having children, and we have, especially you, you have missed a lot of birth. <laughs> yeah. Of your, you know, your friends. Yeah. How did you feel? I know we talked a bit about it, but not in depth. Yeah, so I've got, I've got two mates off the top of the dome that have kids, one it, and... I really, I uh, really, really wanted to be a part of, actually not even, I was uh, three, three mates and I really mm -hmm. wanted to be there for everyone's, yeah. for everything, but just sheer logistics for where I was or was going to. So mm -hmm. for example, um, my mate Smurds, he, his wonderful baby Ruby was to be born very soon after we left Australia. Yeah. And logistically, I was trying to figure out if it was physically possible to do it. And I thought, I have no money. I need to find a job. Yeah. And I couldn't afford to fly to Australia, be there for a certain amount of time and then fly back. Yeah. And everything else. So it was just, it really, I felt not awful, but I definitely did not like being in that situation. And having been in that situation before with Tori and Joey, it was just like, it was really, really tricky. And it was hard because I felt like I missed out on a, a first time opportunity. However, when I got to see Tori's beautiful daughter, Peter, for the first time, I felt like I did actually have my first moment. Mm. It was a bit odd because she's got a bit of a personality now. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it still felt wonderful to connect. One time, that's something that I've learned. So I'm looking forward to seeing Ruby. I'm looking forward to seeing Joey's kids too. Yeah. It's like, yeah. No, and I think uh, what you said is really interesting because you actually mentioned it on your other podcast, Mates on the Mind, which you have with your your friends. 
Yeah. You and you just said it that your first time is going to be something else. You you you're still going to have first times. You're still going to meet those children. Yeah. Maybe not as often, but you're still going to meet them. And I mean, we're adults. We all we all are busy even when we're going to be back in Australia, we're not going to be seeing those child as often those as children. They want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But and I think that's something we need to remind ourselves like no we're not going to live those first time as like uh, in the same timing as everyone yeah but in our own time yeah and mm. do you i'm trying to think if off the top of my head i don't think you've got too many friends that have kids uh let me think let me think oh your cousin your cousin with the twins yeah like, because yeah. you, we weren't there, we weren't here, technically here, mm. for the birth of them. No, exactly, exactly. And I met them for the first time a couple of months ago when they were already like six months. Mm. And it feels weird. Like, it feels weird because you're like, you're getting to know them whilst everyone already knows their character yeah. and their personality. And you're like, uh, you know, that awkward feeling when you meet a baby for the first time yep. like but it felt weird because everyone was like used to the babies already yeah you know what i mean like yeah. it was so strange i'm keen to see them again next week or something but yeah it's a really really weird feeling it is odd mm -hmm. like like I, I remember i went to one of the, i think it was coda's baby shower or something and mm -hmm. they, they were handing Coda around and I was like, I don't want to hold the baby. And I don't know why I didn't want to hold the baby. No, because I'm terrified of dropping the kid. <laughs> like for some reason I can hold a glass of water, which is very fragile in itself, but like, I can't hold a child like, cause it moves. And I don't know if it's going to vomit. I don't know if it's going to poop. I don't know what to do with this thing. I, I need, a, I need, a, I need a baby <laughs> manual. <laughs> Dude, even with a baby manual, like I've done three years of study oh, true and, like childhood true. education and still sometimes I'm like ah, it's very awkward yeah. yeah so so when i when i met the the twin yeah the twins as well yeah. like i was like like oh like do you want to hold it's like no no. <laughs> it's, no and it's not against the baby at all it's not yeah. against anyone i just, just yeah. i just you should trust yourself it's not that bad well <laughs> <laughs> especially when it's not yours <laughs> if you drop it ah well it, i can return you don't have to deal to deal with the repercussions. <laughs> uh, return to sender. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! But anyway, yeah, I do feel like as a traveler, you miss a lot of milestone, but it it does depend on your mindset behind it. And yeah. yes, some of our friends might be sad or maybe even, angry. Yeah, even upset. Yeah. Upset that you know maybe they think that we're selfish, but we can't. Our lives is our life is our life. Like we're yeah. not living for other people. Because if you start living for others, well, you you're not going living to be happy. No, and you're not going to be happy like at all. Like I feel, I feel freaking bad for like one wanted to live in Australia. I feel bad for like yes, my friends here, but like my family as well. Like it's super hard. Yeah. It's super hard because I'm like, I, I feel like an awful person. Um, it's yeah, it's really difficult, but like, I guess my mom last year when she came to Australia, she told me like, mm. she told me that, yes, she's sad that I'm away, but she said that we're not we're not having children to keep them with us all of the time mm. you know they have their life as well yeah and she was like live your life for you don't live it for me even though yeah even though like she's super sad mm. you know that's actually mm. yeah that that really hits the nail on the head because like mm. coming back here uh a second time all my friends, all my family are asking, oh, yeah. hey, like, when are you coming back? Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, oh, I'll be back for, you know, hey, the pressure. July. I'm like, I, like, I can try, 
but like I need it I still need to figure out my life because why can't you come and see me mm. oh because logistic exactly they, exactly like and that's I, the thing like yeah when I decided to move to Setil or move to Australia, a lot of my friends were like, yeah, I'm going to take the time and visit you and whatever. And like, logistically, it's really hard to get really there. It's really hard. It's really hard to get there. But it's just like, that it seems like almost you've got more reason to come back because you've got family. Because no, because I'm the one leaving. Exactly. So it's yeah, on yeah, me, yeah. you know, but I think people would gain a lot as well to come and visit us yeah i i don't mean it in a uh prick way pricky way no pricky no no no, no, no. <laughs> you know what I like mean. like yeah like everyone should come see us sort of thing no i know big gain <laughs> no but like uh one of my mates uh jack mm. who lives in like wagga tumba rumba mm -hmm. in in australia he is so hard to get a hold of mm -hmm. And that is simply because he logistically is like a five hour drive for me. Yeah. But when I ran out to him soon afterwards, he would like, if he was coming anywhere near Sydney, he would give me a call. Yeah. yeah. And it, it just the, the sheer effort of going, okay, like I can't make it all the way, but can you possibly make it mm. like part way? Yeah. So exactly. I remember just before we left, I think it was in like, uh, March, April. He, he came up to watch a Aussie rules game mm -hmm. and he called me and it was like an hour's drive, hour 20 yeah. for me. Yeah. But like, we were able to like catch up Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was so cool. It was like nothing had, like, again, like, uh, I'm really, I'm so fortunate in my friends that if yeah. I haven't seen them in so long, most of them are just like, like, it's it, not necessarily that it's fine, but like, you just catch up, like, like nothing happened. Like, like nothing like, happened. Yeah. Time has passed. You haven't seen them in like two years, but that. But yeah. then like, yeah, but thanks to social media as well, sometimes like you keep, you keep track of what they're doing. Yeah. Keep little tabs, <laughs> keep little tabs. Not in a stalky way, but <laughs> yeah, feet. or yes, in a stalky way. Sometimes I'm like, oh, what are they up to? <laughs> you know, <laughs> they are where? Yeah. But yeah. yeah. But anyway, like it's really hard. It's really hard as a traveler to be away from friends and family, but it's important, I think, to remember the reasons why you're traveling yeah you know because it does bring you so much yeah to travel and you're gonna have your first times another time yeah i definitely you're not i don't think we should have the fear of missing out because you're always going to miss out on something mm. you know like it's gonna happen you can't be everywhere at the same time yeah you know it's just and once you accepted that I think then it's easier to go on with your life, your life and miss some holidays, which can miss some celebrations with friends, miss some milestone. Because you put like other things that you want at the time, just not in front of it, but like, I, f I don't know. Like, I find that if you if you're able to make the time for a goal of some kind, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. either you're missing out. Either, yeah, when it comes to booking a holiday, either you're missing out on their life or you're missing out on your life. Yeah, exactly. And it's exactly. really tricky. Yeah. And then if you want to fit something in between, sometimes it's like super expensive as well. So you're like, shit, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's decisions need your, um, what's the name? In French, uh, if I do the direct translation, is this decisional ba balance, decisional balance. So you basically write down or make a mental list of the positive and the negative of that situation. And if it goes on one side, then it's easier to make a decision. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, there's no uh, magic spell. No. It's all about taking um, the decision, the the decision that you feel the most comfortable with. I feel for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. For yourself, and of course, there's some times when I don't know if you want to talk about it, but when you were in Spain. Oh yeah, um, um, like I, quickly before. Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, it's a bit of a bit of a sad story. 
Um, but it's definitely one of those sort of things because I, I was living in Cardiff, Wales at the time mm -hmm. and I got a call to say that um, or I'd been notified that my grandmother had had a fall mm -hmm. and was not well. Mm -hmm. And I was calling and there was, and there was like, you know, floating rumors that this could be a more serious than we think. Yeah. And then I went to Spain and I was hanging out with some friends and I remember it was, we were doing Pamplona. So we, mm -hmm. we weren't going to do the running of the bulls, but we were there for it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I kept saying, do you want me to come home? Do you want me to come home? I can make it like I can do it. And then there was that, that sort of edge in the, in the voice of, um, if you come home, you might not be there in time. And this might be, um, you don't want that. Oh, you're getting emotional now. Oh, <laughs> it's that like the image or the memories that you have mm -hmm. of your grandmother, mm -hmm. hold on to those ones. You don't want your last memory to be of her in the situation she's currently in yeah mm. fuck <laughs> and i was just like it was so hard because on one hand i'm having this, the greatest time of my life with some friends mm. and on the other hand there's something that's so sad that's happening back at home yeah mm. it was like yeah that was that was a i wouldn't even call it a milestone to be fair but it was like it was definitely one of those situations where I'm like, did I make the right call? And I, th and I think I did. You think you did, yeah. I, like, and I don't know if that's just me backing myself in my own decision to mm -hmm. protect me from mm -hmm. what could have been something else. Um, cause obviously at the drop of a hat, I'd teleport and be there with everyone. Of course. Yeah. Mm. I didn't have a lot of money and I want, I like, I've wanted to do this travel for years, like for many years, I'd saved up specifically for it. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it would have been, you know, impossible to go back to traveling, but it just, it sort of, it was, it was the hardest hit of like missing out of, I've had while traveling mm -hmm. and, you know, touch wood, mm -hmm. I'm always going to be around or be able to be around in future, but like, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that was one of the more intense experiences. Mm. Like since then, um, I remember I went to church or well, like any, oui. it doesn't have to be church, but any, any holy place or a place that's deemed holy. And I just sit and I think about my grandmother mm -hmm. and for Christmas being Christmas day, we, um, you had the wonderful idea of making some you know, getting some caramel sliced together. Yeah. And I asked my granddad for the recipe because in, in his late wife's honor, he's been making Christmas uh, uh, caramel slice ever since. And it's been awesome because it's like she lives on through the slice. So it feels <laughs> like in a way. And then you eat it. And then I eat it. And I like, you know. That's a bit gross. <laughs> and, I mean, like, but it, it's like that, that wonderful sentiment behind mm -hmm. it. And it f <laughs> like our first attempt at making the caramel slice was atrocious. And you know what? It's funny because it is going to be our tradition. It's yes. No, 100%. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Like that was beautiful. Look at how the loop you've you've transformed me. Why? Through food. Through food. <laughs> no, but I think that yeah, I guess that would be a nice tradition to look forward to every Christmas is. Yeah. In honor of um Well yeah. Um mm. yeah, I think that'd be something that's really nice. So Yeah. Yeah, can't be there for every milestone, but yeah. to be able to still celebrate it with the people that you're with mm -hmm. and be grateful for what you have, I think is something that yeah. I like about Christmas. Yeah. Because I've, I've, I don't care about the presents anymore. It used to obviously being a child, you give, you give a shit about those presents. <laughs> like do. in my family, particularly when you got two younger sisters, you will kill someone for those <laughs> presents. <laughs> but like since then, it was just more like it is so cool to have a family mm. that loves me back. We. Oui. Because I've seen, mm. I've seen the other side of it. Yeah. And it's. Yeah, and this I just want to finish up. Uh, mm -hmm. this podcast by the meditation we did this morning mm -hmm. and I found it very very beautiful and what was it saying that you shouldn't live mm. uh, you shouldn't live you should celebrate life or something like that yeah something like that 
<laughs> well, that's boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a matter of ce celebration versus just living. You shouldn't live life, you should celebrate. It. Celebrate it, yeah. And I found it very, very beautiful. And basically what it was saying in the meditation is to be in those, to take those moments to be what I, what's what got stuck with me. You should be indulgent towards yourself. Yeah. You should be mindful. And it's a good moment to be mindful. Yeah. You know? And that's what I liked about it. it every year, it gives you a moment to be mindful. Yeah. And I find it... I find it very important because it's not... It's important to be generous or it's important to be nice and it's important to be happy. But just mindful. Mm. Because I don't... The word mindful for me means... There's... There's a depth behind it that yeah. the word happy or nice or generous doesn't have. I feel the word mindness and indulgence is a flexible word. You know, that's how I see it anyway. So it really got stuck to me. And I feel for me, that's something I want to, it's my own little tradition I want to start doing now every year. I mean, you could look to try and do it every week or every, every day. week as well. Yeah, but it's good to every year. You can also use a mm. New Year's New Year's Eve to do it. But yeah. I don't know. I for that what that's what uh, got stuck with me. Yeah, actually, sorry. Just last one last thing before, because mm. just the idea of mindfulness. I uh, I guess because we were talking about things that we'd done over the year. And just actually being so grateful for where we've mm. been and just talking about it and laughing for like a good hour or so yeah. just we've been here we've been there like do you remember when like this <laughs> happened and it's just it felt really nice that like because we didn't Reflect. have like this big celebration for today but we had this celebration of a whole year of experiences mm. like we've been to you know what's that like five countries yeah new caledonia hawaii New Girl, well, uh, Hawaii, Hawaii America, <laughs> uh, Chile, Mexico, El Salvador, Chile, El Salvador, Argentina, and six, then back to Canada. Back to Canada, yeah, with seven. Yeah, like seven, eight countries with Australia. Yeah, like it's exceptional. We like, miss out on some stuff, but we gained a lot of stuff. Yeah, again, we gained a lot of experiences as well, a lot of knowledge, a lot of yeah, it's nice. Um, if there's anyone uh, listening to this, <laughs> um, you can write to us and actually, I'm actually curious to know what is your special holiday tradition? And it doesn't necessarily have to be Christmas. Yeah, but yeah, what's, what's important for you in celebrations and holidays and all that stuff? And give us a like subscribe and we'll not see you but uh, you'll listen to us uh, <laughs> in another episode of the cheeky travelers thank you so much for listening <laughs>